Love and Light Confessionals on the way in here. I think that's going to be my new favorite podcast for a little while. Yeah, it's good. I, I started listening to that one after I got kind of sick of the spirituality. They did this. Have you listened to that one, Spirituality? I, I just started the. Oh, um, there's a couple of good episodes on that one, but then they do this like really weird episode on like being a white cis male and I like literally listened to it and I was like, you know, I've done that. <laughs> I've had that with you. Oh really? And then Love and Light uh she does an episode critiquing that episode. <laughs> oh <that's laughs> you get really deep into like the spiritual activist drama. I don't know. It's super okay. <laughs> it's super interesting. But um yeah, but they do a couple of good ones. Like they did a couple at the beginning of the pandemic around Q and all and stuff. That was really good. But she's a yoga teacher and an herbalist, so she does more like I think actually they are both yoga teachers too. But she does more yoga related stuff. Um, and the yoga as is dad podcast is my favorite. There only be four episodes, right? Hey, here. <laughs> I saw there was one on Nexium, which yeah, I was, oh, I was like, like oh, that. Uh, yeah. Every time I watch oh. a cult thing, I'm like. I just, the one on the. I can't believe I was abducted by a cult. Yes. Hey, hey, Karen, can you hear me? Yep. Awesome. <laughs> it might just be you on Zoom today, but that's you're the only person I heard. I haven't checked the chat though. People in the studio seem to be running a little tight. I think the time change must be a lot. Yes, I asked man. I, I forgot until last night. I started watching the pharmacist, Jenny. Oh, you did? Yeah. Yeah, wow. Well, it's a, that's power, a powerful movie. Yeah, all of those are. Did you see Dope Sick? Which one? Dope Sick. Yeah, I, I I have like a little bit of a Netflix documentary problem. <laughs> you have a what? Oh, I said I have a Netflix documentary problem. Sometimes I can't stop watching them. <laughs> yeah, I know. There, uh, there's been some good ones. There, there, yeah, there have been the past few years. I think the thing, the thing is I have to stop because sometimes they make me a little too sad about the world. I know, I know.
Songs for you guys. Just... <laughs> no, they're like, I don't know, maybe. <laughs> I, I might be a little bit colorblind. But they're just, to me, they're like, this is what, like, eight year old me probably wore on Easter Day. Like, <laughs> <It> socks. <laughs> you know. Cool. All right, Jane is here. I actually only woke up like five minutes before I had to leave. Because usually my kids wake me up when they weren't awake because oh, yeah. an hour earlier. I don't know. <laughs> well, so I didn't even throw mascara or anything. I didn't eat it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'll, I guess I'll be okay. I, also I can't find it. I didn't brush my hair. <laughs> 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 I didn't brush my hair. Yeah. <laughs> 
people really like the press. I'm a, I'm a set up in the back kind of person, but um, I definitely have students who every time come right to the front. I don't know why. No, <laughs> <laughs> no I like the front because I can see in here. Yeah, I always like the front first. Yeah, I couldn't pick it up. I, I like to go to the back because, well, at least the past few years I've had so many injuries in my body that I know I'm going to modify stuff and change stuff, and so I don't want to be a distraction for other students. And also, I just like to run outside an emergency because that's great for the I need to be by the door. When my partner and I went on like our first date, we, it was like so bad because we both like had to sit on the same side of the table so that we could see the door. <laughs> he was like, "That's a prison thing. What's up with you?" I was like, "Ah, oh, yeah." Um, sorry. Let's see. It's kind of nice. It's very romantic. Yeah. It's <laughs> <laughs> <That's very laughs> You can look at it and it together. <laughs> it's romantic and a little bit of a sign that you may have some issues. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think that by yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to do a trauma-informed class for you all, and I'm actually going to grab a couple more things just to take like, a little bit more of that, so excuse me as I walk around still. Coming in between you and the puppies. Yes, yes, sir. Is that all the Okay. So we're going to cover up the scary, even though most of you can see it. Body for this, but if you are curious, I'm going to do, um, you know, as as close to some of the TSY techniques that we talked about yesterday um, as I, I would personally um, in a class. So, um, first off, how's everyone doing? How are you feeling today? Tired. Tired. Emotionally heavy. Seriously big topics uh, yesterday, yeah. And it sounds like some, some people went home and consumed some more media on the topic, so. Yeah. Emotionally heavy, tired. What else? I'm happy about that. You're happy about it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of like it. Maybe it's like it's like they're like sleeping later, right. which is like kind of nice. Um, yeah, and it's like really bright in the morning. So happy about the time change. Some others not so much. Um, <laughs> emotionally heavy, tired. What else? Can anyone oh, go ahead? I say like. My body hurts. This weather is not my good season. My yeah, my body yeah. hurts. It's kind of back and forth. It's yeah. Sore. It's been wet this weekend. Yeah. Sore. Okay. Hurt, sore. Um, anyone have like a specific part of your body that's like kind of talking to you, needs attention? My left hip. Your left hip? Okay. My upper back and neck. 
your upper back and neck. You said your foot earlier, right? Oh, yeah, but yeah. that this is worse than that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> upper back, back. Okay. What else? My right ankle. Right ankle. And folks on Zoom, feel free to chime in too. Uh, okay, right ankle, left hip. Probably won't remember which side for everyone, but. <laughs> <laughs> what else? Right hip, left hip. For the people who named like an emotion or a feeling, is, is there a part of your body that you're holding that emotion? Heart, yeah. The neck and the shoulders is part of that, yeah. My left hip. Left hip. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm with you on the hips. All right, um, Corinne and Kay, anything you add on how you're feeling this morning, or anything you, anything you want to work on, or any part of your body that's kind of signaling anything to you? I think I'm just gonna avoid a lot of shoulder things because I tore my rotator cuff in my labrum, so it's not gonna lift my right arm above my head much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll I'll try and keep that in mind if we're lifting arms a lot too. Thanks. All right. Corinne, anything from you? You don't have to, but all right. I want to give give the Zoomies a choice. Um, so just so folks on Zoom know, um, as you're practicing, and obviously this is like a little different because you're all in teacher training and half of us are hybrid, right? Or we're, or some of us are on Zoom, some of us are in person, not quite half. Um, but if I was teaching a trauma-informed class on Zoom, I would generally tell folks that they can turn their camera on or off. Okay, so um, so that is an option. You, if Kay or Corinne, if you feel like turning your camera off at any point, um, that's not a problem by me, so feel free to do that. Okay, and then just for everyone, um, of course, as usual, everything that I'm saying is an option, but even more so today, like there's no need to try everything out because you want to, to learn, you know, what I'm doing for cueing or sequencing, like this is really an hour for you to just care for your body and to integrate some of what we've been learning, some of those heavy topics. Um, to maybe allow yourself to get away from them for a moment and just be in your physical body. Um, so if I offer something, even if it doesn't sound like an offering, it is take it or leave it. I will not be offended if you leave it. Like I, I really won't. If you lay down on your mat the whole time and take a nap, I honestly won't be offended unless you start snoring and then I might <laughs> wake you up <laughs> gently. Um, but I still won't be offended. So it's your it's your body, it's your practice, right? At the end of the day, you are living in your body, I'm not. So the choices you make in it um, should make you comfortable and feel um, as good as good as you can. Um, yeah. Then beyond that, um, just for context, it like with you all, I probably wouldn't have to set any like gr uh, like group agreements or ground rules like before practice. Um, but in some settings, I would I would say like try to stay on your own mat. Um, you know, jumping out of people's mats, and usually that makes people laugh because they, you know, um, don't really consider jumping onto others on people's mats, but they may have not known to not get up and and walk around and not stay on their own mat. So, um, so stay on your own mats, please. Uh, but if you need to leave the room at any point, just do so quietly and come back when you're ready. Um, yeah, other than that, if you have any questions as we're practicing, um, you can raise your hand and I'll come on over um, and try and help you if I can. All right. All right. So um, if you want to join me, we're going to start lying down. And we'll start in a supported what we would call a supported fish. So that's going to be basically like a way to open up potentially the chest and maybe the throat. And so if you're at home, you could do that with, uh, if you don't have something like yoga box, you could use like a pillow or a towel or a blanket. 
and just roll it up and place it underneath your shoulders. You can move it and adjust it until you feel comfortable. Um, if you're at the studio, we can use blocks, we can use bolsters. Um, this time of year, I kind of like like a little bit of like sharpness around my spine. So I've been doing second highest height kind of in my spine and maybe dropping my head back. And I actually will even move the block at points and kind of try and open up in different places. But that, that might be too much for folks. And if that's the case, you could turn your block to a lower height or you can use a bolster and kind of press your blocks a little closer together and then drape the bolster over the blocks. Maybe like so. And, and then come on back. And if you are dealing with some sort of a shoulder injury, you're just gonna wanna kind of play with the props until it feels like, okay, this is like, this is a shape that maybe feels helpful and supportive and not like aggravating um, any of those discomforts or injuries. And then once you're lying down, if you are choosing to lie down, eyes open or closed is your choice. You also have choice in what you do with your legs. So you could cross your ankles, you could place your feet together, you could knock your knees together, you could straighten your legs. So lots of choice there too. And I'm gonna do us to rest here for several minutes, but if at any point you need to come out, remove the props, feel free to release when you're ready. As you're resting here, you might start to bring a little bit more awareness to your breath. And maybe that's just a, an observation of your breath. So you might not change it or shift it, you might just watch the breath as it flows in and out. In and out. might also start to notice a sensation somewhere in your body. So maybe there's this sense of, of opening or expansion somewhere. Maybe there's a little constriction or even discomfort in some area. Again, you might not try to change any of that, but just taking in that information, just observing, noticing. It might be something as simple as noticing the hands resting on your body or on the floor, that place of contact between hands. 
fabric for the temperature that you're feeling under the skin. Maybe you feel your head resting on your crop or resting on the floor, or maybe you feel your back resting on the crop. Maybe there's a, tan a very tangible sensation if the block is kind of pressing into muscle or bone on your back. So whatever you're feeling physically in your body, we can use that as an anchor to the present moment. So we can kind of tie or tether our consciousness to those sensations as means to, to be here. That in of itself, just being able to be here, even briefly, even for a moment, that's big work, that's profound. Feeling ready to shift if you haven't already, you might start to stretch your arms up overhead. Or maybe you move your legs, changing the shape of the legs. If you feel comfortable here, you can also stay here, but if you'd like to shift and move, eventually you might come up onto your knees with me and just move your props um, either over to the side or you you may want them for this next shape, um, but maybe you're putting them towards the top of your mat. So what we'll do next is here would be open up the knees any amount, and if you're using props, you can place them out in front of you towards the front of your mat. And I placed some blocks um, under my bolster. And then you can just drape yourself forward, either onto the floor or onto the cross. And you can either turn your head down or you can turn your head to one side. Yeah, and it looks like folks are really kind of feeling out, out the props and what they want to do here, but you can use them or not to your call. Another option might be to place Something under your knees for a little bit of padding under the knees. And then you have a choice in what to do with your arms. Are you stretching your arms forward? Are you taking them back along the sides of the body? Are you bending your elbows? 
So just really allowing yourself to be held here by the ground, by the props, by your own choices of what, of how you're taking the shapes in your body that feel most supportive to you. Yeah, your focus can go to your breath, that constant ebb and flow. <clears throat> or your focus might shift to the sensations that you could be feeling in your body. So maybe those sensations have changed. Maybe there's some sensation in the lower back or the spine. Or maybe you're focusing on the places where your arms touch down on the ground or your head rests on the floor or on a prop. Be here for about another minute. So if you haven't turned your head to the other side, you might turn your head if it's if you're resting on one cheek. be able to feel your breath a little bit more in the back of your body here as well behind your heart so maybe you just shift your awareness there for a moment notice what you feel like it's time just slowly coming up and if you'd like to press those props away feel free or you might even set up your blocks towards the front of your mat on either side if you like to use them throughout or if you want to try that out and so if you're coming along with me we're going to place our hands on the ground and start to move our knees underneath our hips and again option to pad your knees here we're just going to start to move in any way that helps to warm the body. So maybe that's some shoulder rolls or some movements in the head or swinging the hips from side to side. It could look like turning your hands around to stretch through your wrists or your forearms. It could look like tapping out your feet or tucking your toes and shifting back. So just exploring any movement for a moment that feels good. It might be Tipping the belly down and lifting the chin and then curving the spine, tucking the chin. There's no right or wrong here. You could also be still. And as you flow and as you stretch, are you able to zero in? Are you able to notice? sensation eventually if you'd like well Start to move the spine in both directions. So you can join me in curving the spine into this sort of C shape, if this feels right, in both directions. So inhaling and allowing for the belly to drop and the chin to lift any amount, and then exhaling and curling the spine, tucking the chin, opening up to the back. Inhaling, see if you can really breathe deeply here 
adapt the breath to the movement. Exhaling. Inhaling. Exhaling. Yeah, and eventually coming back to center, you might tuck your toes and press all 10 toes down onto the mat for a moment. We'll shift back over the heels, just briefly pressing into the mat if you're with me, with the hands. And then shifting forward, you might lift up your knees and send your hips up and back. But option to stay down with the knees too, that's great. So if you're in this sort of V-shape in your body, you might bend your knees. Maybe you've been lifted lower your heels or sort of pedal out your feet or you could shake your head. Options to come down on your forearms for this. If there's any tension in your shoulders or again, to drop the knees. So feeling this out, keeping the breath flowing if you're able. Take a second just to climb the hands like five or six inches back towards the feet. And as you do that, bend your knees as much as you'd like to. So we're going to have about five or six more inches. And you might notice some shifts in your legs as you do that. You might want to tend your fingers as you do that. So that's like a, the palm coming up in the center. Yeah, then eventually we're going to climb all the way back to our feet. You have some choice here. You could reach for your toes. You could catch your elbows, you could take the hands anywhere to the legs, you could bend the knees as much as you'd like. Are you able to really drop and relax your head? Are you able to let your shoulders soften and drop? And maybe just create this sense of heaviness in the upper body. You're ready you might slide your hands up your legs and just kind of lift your torso about halfway up so if maybe your upper body is parallel to the ground beneath you and your spine is lengthening and let's stay here for a breath or two if you'd like and you could place your hands on your shins yeah or on your hips inhale exhale lower back down and this time i'm just going to be pressing to your feet if you're with me and we're going to start to roll up to standing you can take your time feeling your vertebrae stack yeah when you come to stand you might place your hands somewhere on your body that's calling for your attention or you could have your hands along the sides of the body with the palms maybe turning forward Eyes open or closed, always your choice. Can you take a second to just kind of scan your body from head to toe? Just notice what you're feeling, either on your skin or skin inward. It could be as simple as the clothing touching the skin, the feet on the ground. And sometimes movement can help us to intercept to feel to notice things internally more but sometimes it can be a distraction so it's really up to you and where you're at what makes you feel balanced and present but you might be doing really subtle movements here like shifting your weight around the feet so you feel different parts of your feet pressing into the ground And then you might drop that and just land in your gravitational center with a long spine reaching in both directions, a full breath in. Let's let that go. And then you could reach your arms up or you could flow forward here with hands on the hips, just depending how, on how shoulders are feeling. But inhaling, and as you exhale, Lowering down, we're going to climb forward right away back to that B shape if you're with me. And you can stay here, you can drop your knees, your call, full breath in. 
long breath out. And then if you're with me, let's drop the knees together. And then inhale the heart forward, chin might lift. And as you exhale, round in your spine and start to shift just slightly back over your heels. Maybe your toes stay tucked to open up through the feet. And then shifting forward so the shoulders are somewhat over the wrists and the hips are over the knees. We'll take the right leg, if you're with me, and we'll inhale it out behind us. Great. Right. And then first, let's just move that leg around in whatever way feels good. So just listening to the body here, trying to see what, what sort of movement would help you to wake up your right hip, your ankle, your knee. Maybe it's knee circles, ankle circles, gentle kicks. Yeah, and then eventually let's just draw that knee towards the nose if you're with me and you can kind of round in your spine like we've been doing, pressing away from the ground with the hands. Exhale. And then inhale, we'll send that leg back and maybe you send the heart forward. Exhale, drawing the knee towards the nose, any amount. Inhale, sending the leg back, opening through the heart. Let's do one more like that if you're with me. So exhale. Great, and then inhale. And as you exhale, this time we'll draw the knee in somewhat, and then you might just kick your leg out to the side. And as you do that, you might get a little closer to a neighbor, so maybe you just check in and see if it's okay for you to place your foot on their mat or <laughs> next to them. And then we're going to press that foot down into the ground a little bit more. And you might shift your hips back in space just slightly as you climb your hands forward any amount. And as you climb your hands forward, you can let your head drop. You might think like, kind of like we were doing in that V shape. Arms about shoulder distance apart, face neutral, shoulders on the back. But you're also welcome to kind of fold down onto a prop here or land on your forearm. So whatever works. And if you want more sensation in your body, you might explore dropping the hips further back or pressing firmer into your right foot. And if you want less sensation, you're going to do the opposite. Loosen up through the foot, shift forward. And that's a general guess, but there might be other little adjustments you can make to change the sensation in your body. Okay, let's take three deep breaths here if you're staying with me. You can always release early. And at the end of your third exhale, you can start to climb your hands back. And remember, you can always pad your knees for this. But we might come up to kind of stand on that knee. Yeah, and if your leg is out to the side, what we'll do is we'll slide the arm down that leg and reach the opposite arm up overhead to stretch through the side body. Any amount, so how far you go is your choice here. And it might change the sensation and the shape. So feeling that out if you're able if you don't feel anything here and you want to feel a little bit more, you might reach your fingertips a little further. If you want to feel a little bit less, maybe loosening up in the arm, dropping the shoulder, coming up a little higher. Let's take a full breath in. Yeah, then exhale. If you're coming along for the ride, releasing and placing the left hand on a prop or on the ground as the right hand comes up overhead. And you might turn your palm and reach towards my voice, or you could keep your shoulders stacked and your joints stacked. So again, your choice. Okay, breathing here. And then option to release your hand to your hip and just take a moment to lift that leg and feel the strength in your outer hip. Nice deep breath. In and out. In. Nice and out. And then just placing that foot down. And if you're with me, maybe coming up to a more neutral spine and then taking your arms out along the sides of the body. Maybe you look forward over your left fingertips, if that's the way you're facing. And then one more time, stretching back. The right hand can land on that leg, inhale. And this time as you exhale, if you're coming with me, you might place your hands back down on your mat out in front of you. And then lift that leg up behind you. 
and let's step the foot, however it works, forward in between the hands, or maybe you're taking a little bit more space for the body and it's over to the right. And then I'm definitely gonna pad my knee here by rolling up my yoga mat a little bit. So you could pad with a blanket or a towel or a rolled up mat. And the blocks under my hands feel great here as support. And it also kind of just helps me to create space for the upper body. So you could do hands on the floor, hands on blocks, hands on another prop if you have another prop at home. And then you get to decide how far your hips drop forward here. And you might make kind of base that decision on how much sensation you're feeling in your legs and your hips. So, so option to stay here or option to shift back, straightening that front leg. And maybe you flex your toes or move your hands back. We'll take a nice deep breath if you're with me and lengthen through the spine and then holding forward any amount over that front leg. Breathing here. So option to stay or option to move a bit floating forward and back, feeling the hinge in the knee and the hips, maybe there's sensation in the ankle or the toes. So a great place to continue to explore or at any point you'd like to shift forward and lift the arms or maybe place the hands at the heart or on the hips and shifting forward big inhale and as you exhale if you're with me we're going to take the hands back down and then option to tuck your back toes and lift up that kneecap and then we'll straighten both the legs here and you may want to shorten your stance a little bit so you may want to take your back foot and step it forward and then big inhale to lengthen through the spine and as you exhale any amount holding forward again a few deep breaths noticing what you feel for me this is it's almost impossible for me to not feel sensation in the back of my leg here and it is a common thing that humans have these chronically tight hamstrings so you might feel sensation through the the upper thigh or even low in your leg or somewhere else so option to stay or option to drop that back knee down again and you might keep your toes tucked this time and inhale your arms up or to your hips or to your heart and then exhaling hands land down just flowing a bit with the breath we can straighten both legs maybe fold forward let's do that again so big inhale if you're with me and then full long exhale. And then one more if you want it. Awesome, shifting forward, bending into that knee. You can place the knee down on the mat and place your hands in any way that feels comfortable and then shift back so that your knees are once again under your hips. And then maybe you tuck the toes and lift the hips up for a few moments, pedaling out the feet or shaking out the head. Sigh out. Well, inhale as you exhale, you might drop your knees back down if you're with me. And then inhale that left leg out behind you and move it around in whatever way would feel good. Knee circles, ankle circles, gentle kicks. And then if you'd like to flow with the breath, inhaling and lifting that leg as the heart lifts forward and exhaling, drawing the knee any amount towards the nose, maybe the spine rounds. Inhale. Exhale. Inhaling. 
exhaling. Yeah, and then inhaling that leg out and maybe sliding it over to the side and checking in with your other neighbor. You can press your foot down into the mat any amount and drop your hips back any amount as you climb your hands forward. Maybe resting on the forehead, maybe resting on the forearms, maybe resting on props. Maybe you're staying lifted and really just pressing the hips back, actively engaging through the hands and the arms. So you decide how much sensation you feel here, potentially by shifting your hips back in space, by moving your foot, by pressing firmer into the foot. So lots of ways to change and shift this for your body, lots of choice. Three deep breaths if you're staying. At the end of that third breath, if you'd like to climb back towards your knee, we'll start to climb back and maybe you pad your knee if it's not already. As you come up to stand on the knee, you can slide your left arm down the leg. Maybe your right arm reaches up overhead and you tilt to the side any amount. And if there's any shoulder irritation, you could always um, keep the hand on the hip here, or you can bend at your elbow, kind of rest your arm on your head so that there's less effort in the shoulder. If you'd like to, you will windmill down, and then your right hand can land on a block or on the floor or any other prop. And maybe that left arm reaches up. But now you have options to stack your joints or to turn your palm and start to stretch towards my voice or over that left ear. And then again, you could stay here. You could place your hand on your hip and maybe lift that left leg for a moment, engaging through the other hand. And releasing when you're ready. I'll come back up if you're with me to a more neutral spine. Send the arms out. Maybe look over your front fingertips. And then put the palm and stretch back. The inhale. And as you exhale, coming down and placing the hands back out in front of you. Sending that leg back. Inhaling. And exhaling, stepping the foot through when you're ready. Maybe grabbing for those blocks again, maybe patting the knee, whatever helps you to feel supported here. Dropping the hips forward any amount. And I really I like the blocks because I can put a little bit of my body's weight onto the blocks and then it feels a little better for my knee to come further forward. And if I can put my knee further forward, I have more access to stretch in my back hip. So you can feel all that out. Decide where to land your weight. Pull deep breath. Yeah, and then eventually you might straighten out that leg. And then fold over the leg any amount. Breathing deeply. So option to stay or option to move forward and back now. Bending in that knee, straightening that leg. you might come forward and tuck your toes with me lifting that back kneecap and then straightening both legs so you can always shorten your stance here so shorten the space between the legs inhaling to lengthen the spine and exhaling to fold forward so you can get a pretty similar stretch but keep your knee down right so that's definitely another choice to stay 
where we were before. Continue to do the work there. If you want to move, we'll bend both knees. Maybe you keep your back toes tucked to drop that back knee down to the ground. Either left hands to heart or hips are up above the head, inhaling. And then exhaling and releasing and straightening both legs, lengthening the breath here so you can move slowly. So inhaling, dropping that back knee, switch, sweeping the arm up. Exhaling, releasing the hands, straightening the legs. Maybe one more like that. Inhale. Exhale. Yeah, and then inhaling and coming forward. You can drop that knee and place the hands back down, sending that leg out behind us, maybe tucking the toes again and lifting the hips up high. If you're ready for rest, drop your knees and sit back over your knees. That's an option. Or you might clap your hands five or six inches back and pause, bending the knees as much as you'd like. And then again, climb the hands back five or six inches and pause. Five or six inches and pause. And then maybe all the way back to the feet. If you were someone who was dealing with some head and neck discomfort, maybe you take your hands and you interlace your hands together and then place your hands on your occipital ridge. That's the area where your skull and your neck meet. So you need to be able to kind of feel a ridge there. And then placing the hands there on the back of the head, you can bob your head up and down. The knees can be soft, really letting the head go, maybe turning gently from side to side. Good. Releasing with you're ready. We're going to inhale up halfway, so we keep this little halfway lift. And then exhaling back down if you're with me. Softening the knees, inhaling, coming up to stand. Your arms can come right to your sides or sweep up overhead. And exhaling and releasing and landing the hands either to your sides or somewhere on the body, calling for your attention. Full deep breath here, inhale. Exhale, maybe that quick scan from head to toe, just noticing anything that's calling out to you, any sensation that wants your attention. When you're ready, full inhale if you're coming with me, we'll sweep the arms up, and then exhale, fold back down. Hands can climb forward, just a little bit more movement if that's what you'd like. So kind of like before, we'll lift up the right leg, but you could do it from this V shape or you could drop your knees again. So options here. Maybe move that leg around a bit. Before turning the hip down and stepping forward in one step or two steps or three steps, whatever works. And you could climb your hands up to your side from here. You're also welcome to stay low with that knee dropped. And then arms could land at the harder hips or you can sweep them up overhead. Big inhale. Full exhale. Awesome. Let's release the hands down to the hips for a moment if you're with me. We're gonna turn our back toes towards the long edge of the mat. And then right toes can come forward. You're going to see me turn, but that's just a demo here. So your front toes facing forward. You, if you feel in balance at all, change the position of your feet. You can bend different amounts in your front knee. You could slide up your legs so they're on the same plane, kind of feeling that out. And then inhaling the arms off to the sides, if that feels good. But you're also welcome to keep your hands on your hips or the center of your heart. Any tension in your shoulder. When you're ready, let's put that back forward and we'll stretch back if you're with me. Inhale. And then exhale, coming forward if you'd like. Your right arm can land on that thigh. 
left arm comes up over your head. And just like when we were on the knees, you have option to stack the joints here. You can stretch your arm forward. Maybe sensation shifts to your side body. Great. And then coming back up, you'll find the arms at shoulders height. Maybe you can come back one more time. And this is just for play. And you might reach for your left as you do this and maybe place it in your hands. And as we come on down, you could place your block somewhere on the ground. And then you have a couple of options here. I would suggest maybe the block comes over to the side of your, your foot and your shoulder is stacked over your wrist. Then you could press that block down into the ground. And then you could peel your left arm up and stack your shoulders. And you have the option to stay here or to step your right foot an inch or so back and then lift up your back leg. You could also do that with your hands, both hands on your body. That's helpful. And eyes focus on a single point. If that's helpful, take three deep breaths. So wherever you're at, strong, stable in the way that works best for you. Also releasing when you're ready. Maybe sweeping those arms back. And then windmilling down. I'll take the hands to the mat and step back to that V shape. And then again, you can stay here or you could drop your knees and rest over your ankles. Option to be back up with us at any point if you are resting or option to continue to rest. If you're doing that on the other side, we'll sweep up the left leg. And again, you could do this with the knee down or lifted. Maybe you move that leg around a little bit before sending it forward. <clears throat> and it doesn't have to be in one swoop, it might be several. Eventually you can climb up onto that thigh and option to stay here and do the work of stretching through the legs and the hips. Or option to add in the arms and inhale them up overhead. If there is any tension in the shoulders, keeping the arms a little wider so that the shoulders can keep descending down the back. Breathing here. We are releasing the hands to the hips if you're with me and we're gonna turn on our back toes so that they somewhat face that long edge of the mat. They could be angled here if it feels better on your foot or knee. So adjust the legs so that they feel strong and you feel balanced. And you can bend any amount in that front knee here. And then maybe your arms come out to the sides and your eyes land over your front middle finger or on a single spot on the wall. Full deep breaths. If, if you don't focus on anything else with your breath as you practice, try at least to not hold the breath while we're in the posture. See if you can keep breath flowing. Eventually let's inhale and reach back if you're with me. And then exhale, come forward. Your left arm can land lightly on your thigh, opposite arm up overhead, either stacked or stretching forward. And then all the way back, inhale. And as you exhale, you can come down and grab for that block or another prop and place it underneath your left hand. And then move it over to the side a bit so that your joints start to stack a little more. And you can bend into that front knee and reach your arm up. And this is a way to get pretty strong in your legs. You can press your feet into the ground. Feel muscles engaging perhaps. And you also have the option to lift that back leg. You may, might either shift your block forward or step your foot back as you do that. So whatever works for you. And then wherever you land, taking three deep breaths if you want to stay. Oh, exhaling to land back slowly. Maybe sweeping back, inhale. Exhale, grand milling down. Hands can land on your mat. And we're going to step back. Maybe you take that V shape, or maybe you drop your knees with me and you sit back over your heels. You could use the props like we did before here, or you can sink right to the ground, resting your forehead. Maybe bend in your elbows a bit. Breathing deeply.
So the choice remains to stay here. Or for those of you who need it a little more for your hips, really feel this out, go slow. They give you a couple of different options here. So one option is to tuck your toes, lift your right leg again, and then draw that knee any amount towards your nose as you kick your foot out to the side. And you can prop yourself up here. Sometimes the bolster underneath the seat, if it's floating, can feel really good. Or you can have the bolster under your arms if you decide to come down. The other option is to roll onto your back and place your right foot onto your left thigh. You could do this on a wall and place your left foot on a wall, or you could interlace your hands behind your leg. So kind of feeling out what works best in your hips there. Propping yourself up in the ways that best support your body how it feels this morning so that you can land here for a little longer than you might some of the other shapes that we took maybe it's a minute maybe it's two or three can you soften muscle can you relax the face are you able to release through your forehead or allow the teeth to separate and the jaw to soften. Sometimes a little shifting from side to side in the hips can feel good here too. You might take some longer or more complete exhales as you're here with this idea of release of whatever, release of stale air, release of stale energy, release of anything else that you feel like you want to signal to your body to release, letting it go on your exhale. ready to switch sides we're just going to move really slowly so you can climb on up you can take your knees under your hips you could take that leg and move it around so moving the leg around might be a nice release um, but also that v-shape can be a nice way to neutralize here so lifting the hips and pedaling out the feet eventually you're coming forward lifting that leg other side kicking the foot over if you're on your back you'll switch the cross so placing left foot on right by now if you did the opposite before and then propping yourself up in whatever way feels supportive so it might be a prop under your seat it might be props under your arms Eyes open or closed, your call. As we start to slow down, adding layers of clothing might help you to feel more comfortable here. You hear the door behind you, just know that that's Lou entering for his class. So and then he'll relock the door. So what are you able to soften here? Are you able to relax your forehead? Are you able to release in the jaw? And if not, that's okay. But exploring those areas. Sometimes a release happens just by dropping the tongue away from the roof of the mouth or spreading the teeth out. So letting there be a little space between the teeth. 
or maybe we need to move our mouths or our jaws to find release. You're ready. If you feel complete on this side, we need a few more breaths. I'm not sure that we were there for exactly the same amount. So feel free to stay for a little longer. If you feel ready to shift, just know that we'll come back and meet in that shape where we rest our heads on the ground and sit over our heels. No rush. Feel free to meet someone else. Yeah, once you're back there, if you'd like to stretch a little more with me, I'll have you come on up onto your shins and your knees, and again, feel free to pad here. And if your feet are crossed like mine are, you'd uncross your feet and just place them under your seat for a moment. And we'll take our hands out behind us. And then just lean back slightly. And if you'd like to, we're going to lift the thighs. And the objective here is to potentially feel something through the front of the thighs, so to stretch that area. So you might feel more by lifting your hips higher. You might feel more if you want to come down onto your forearms, you could do that. Sometimes the knees start to lift, and we need to kind of press our knees down to feel something through the front of the body. So just exploring a little bit here so that you can feel a stretch if you're desiring that stretch. Eventually, sorry folks, I put a, an hour of silence on my phone, so that probably ended. So eventually you're going to drop your knees if you're with me, and we'll swing the legs forward. We'll just straighten the legs out in front, and you could place a prop under your seat. And you do have other options here. You could open up your legs for a wide stance. Or you could place your feet together and take your knees out wide. And then wherever you're at, we're going to fold forward if you're with me. So inhaling for length in the spine and exhaling. Fold. Sometimes as I fold, I like to start with a really kind of a higher fold so that I can kind of feel out if there is space in my lower back and see kind of where I'm creating the fold. Am I hinging at my hips? Or am I simply rounding my spine? And why might I be doing both of those things? And so I'll usually take a few waves through my spine. So little inhales to lift and little exhales to lower. And then once I feel like my hips are hinged at a point that feels good, I feel this amount of sensation that I'm desiring in this moment, then I might relax my head, round in my spine. Then I might place a prop under my head. Wherever you're out, let's take three deep breaths. And if you're folding forward, the front body might be a little constricted. So can you breathe into your back? Eventually coming up. And we're going to twist in whatever way you'd like here. So if there's some twist where you cross one leg over the other, feel free, or you can cross out your ankles. And we'll just twist to the right when you're ready. So wrapping around your spine, you can use your arms to emphasize the twist, or you might really try to keep it in your spine, in the center of your body. And you might draw it all the way up to the upper spine by turning your chin and your knees back. Coming back to center, just switching sides here. So twisting in the other direction, any amount. And releasing. 
when you're ready. So these can come into the chest. I'm going to offer any sort of shape or movement that would feel good for you now. So even though we're doing this trauma form class, you have to sit a lot this weekend, right? So please feel free to move in any way that's going to counteract that. Um, maybe it's like laughing back and forth on your spine. Uh, maybe it's another twist. Maybe it's another hip opener. Maybe it's just some stillness. It might take 30 seconds or so to continue that. Or even out side to side. Coming into a final resting shape. Now we're not going to be here for long. If you feel like you do need stillness and rest, maybe it's coming onto your back and covering up your eyes with a piece of clothing, or you can keep your eyes open and focus on a single point. If you want to stay a little more alert, you might sit in meditation here, or there might be a desire to lay on your side body, maybe with a pillow or a bolster under your head. You could also put your legs up the wall, if that would feel good. So we are running out of time. I'd love to do a little bit of yoga nidra with you all, but because we're a little short on time, I'll have you on your own if, if it feels desirable. Once again, just scan your body from head to toe. So dropping your awareness down through every part you can call forth in your consciousness. You don't have to analyze these parts of the body or move them. You might just drop your awareness into them and then move along until you check in on your whole self from head to toe. Resting here in space and on planet Earth in the United States, Portland, Maine, at Arcana. Here you are. Or maybe at home.
and complete one. That simply is spirituality. Start to move and shift. Maybe rolling over to one side if you're on your back. Or maybe sweeping your arms up overhead if you're sitting. Eventually, if you're with me meeting up in a comfortable seat, hands could rest on the body or on the thighs, maybe on the heart, maybe palms pressing together. Eyes open, they're closed. We'll share a deep breath together. Inhale. Exhale. Yeah, and then an internal OM. If you're in the studio, if you're at home, you can do this internally or externally. I'll say at OM today um, just for a little bit of a sound, and you can let it settle, or you can do it on your own internally. So big inhale to begin. So bow and forward if that feels good. You can say peace, you can say Om Shanti, you can say holy crap, whatever, whatever works. Onward, peace out. <laughs> Om Shanti. Um, so uh, we we are a little behind. I went a little over. So if you don't mind, um, Lou's class I think is pretty full. If you're in the class, you can just stay and chill. Um, if any, real quick, if anyone, there's a, quite a few bags on the floor in the prop room that make it kind of impossible to go change in the changing room. So if you have a bag on the floor, if you can like stuff it under where the bolsters are or put it in a cubby somewhere so that people can still enter the changing room. Uh, that would be great. And we'll talk a little bit about this practice after we lose class. You're also welcome to hang out in the basement. Um, uh, those of you on Zoom, I'm going to keep Zoom going just so Lou can go right into his class. So you're welcome to stay for his class. Um, or we'll see you later. Jenny, I signed up for Lou's class, but I really need to go there. Sounds good. Okay. Is that okay? Um, let me, yeah, I mean, yes, of course, but um, let me just make sure to see if there's anyone like waitlisted or anything. And like, you know, let's go. Wait, you signed up to practice or to observe? I was going to observe, okay. but then Jane didn't observe yesterday. So you observed, so yeah, 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 okay. Yeah, you're good. It's not, it's not full or waitlisted or anything. I didn't sign up, but maybe you just need to, and I'm not actually taking it. I just signed up yesterday afternoon. Yeah. You guys can open those doors so Lou knows he can come in if you don't. So Cass, you're staying. Cass, Christina. Jade, are you staying? To observe. Oh, to observe. Okay, so what you'll do is you'll clean up your mat and go, yeah, sit in the back of the room. Okay. Is there anyone on the wait list? No, there's only one other person. So it's actually, there was a lot more folks, but now there's just, um, there's just four people, including James. So you guys can spread out if you want. Hey, Jenny. Yeah. speaker back there is really loud. Yeah, yeah. I know at some point I think it was a little too loud. Um, also, I would say, um, just let me know and I'll move it, Casey, because I do kind of want to be able to hear it up here. Um, and so it wasn't super loud up here, but I also don't want it to be by the Zoom stuff so they can't hear me. So I'll just move it to a different place. Yeah, I thought of that. It was like loud and you could really hear you back here. Yeah, okay. Thanks. Yeah, it almost had yeah. like a little bit of a vibration that came in. Like it was kind of intense. Yeah. I like music in class. I do too. Uh, I'm 
that. But yeah, there's a couple. I mean, I definitely turned it down a couple times, but but I will say, if you don't like music in class, I'm not for you because I definitely play loud music. Oh yeah, no, I'm all about music. I wonder if I get. On a shelf. Uh, yeah, I don't know. We can just move it around and see for sure. I guess I'll slide away. I think I decided if you're if you're not paying for class, can you roll up your map? Because there's not a lot of people in this class. Okay. If you're not saying if you can put away maps. I mean like I I'm already doing a lot of them, but it's a little bit of a This is all set up for you, so if anyone's coming on Zoom, I don't know if they are. I don't think they're not. So, I mean, you can turn it off. Just turn it off too. Uh, I didn't clean my mat, but uh, I'm, I'm happy to. I have to like Yeah. 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 Yeah
It won't connect to my oh, phone. Right I'm pretty sure it's like connected to someone else. But I don't know. But it might be me because I used it for the shop. Well, I just connected the computer for my This has been my favorite um, playlist. It, it like always plays something different, and it's what's it called? It, it's like is it a coffee shop? <laughs> it's um oh shit, I'm gonna live chat. Lo-fi hip hop radio beats to sleep, study, relax to. Oh, nice, um, nice. But it, it's like a funky one. We love funky lo-fi. Yes, we do. Sleep study rough vibes. I just found out Neo Soul is what they call my music. Like the 90s, like like softer hip hop R and B, like Eric Badu and like it's Neo called Neo Soul. Soul. I like it. <laughs> yeah. I like it. Yeah, I just I found it in the shower. I accidentally left him in there. Oh, I got trauma. Okay. Okay. Is that your That's not Okay. I'm just kidding. Thank you. Thanks for looking up for me. A real concern. Hot liquid, our must right now. They totally are. Oh my gosh, the snow has got me down. Yeah. Okay. Nothing already. It feels like springtime snow. Yeah, this feels like springtime snow. Yeah. Very much. Like you're just shoveling it. Wow. Goodbye. All right. Well, we put that screen down because we were doing like. Trauma, a trauma informed class, so if you like them there, you can take that down. We were just using it for the last one. I, I was thinking of leaving it up because, I mean, it's, it's kind of nice to not look at myself. Yeah. Too, right? <laughs> it's, it's one of those days where I, I don't really like want to be in my body right now, but like, here we are. Um, so it looks like everyone is here. So we get wherever I want to go. I took my glasses off. I like mine. <laughs> yeah. I'm going just by ears today. Yeah. So we have two wonderful yoga teachers to be viewing um, me today, not not you guys, just just seeing how I do my my thing. Um. I just wanted to let everyone know about that. Oh, yeah. Um, 
how are we all feeling today? I know that's kind of a loaded question for some. Um, Loki, I'm grumpy. Okay, but, grumpy. Yeah. All right. I've been a little exhausted and sad. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Lydia, how about yeah. 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 It looks like we're all a little <laughs> exhausted and sad today. Okay. So. <laughs> hey, Luke. <laughs> <laughs> Therapy yoga. All right. Well, so let's. So everyone's got some blocks here and some bolsters, which is nice. Let's let's grab one of those, whichever you find more comfortable, or if you'd like a bolster on a block. We're gonna start in supported fish pose. This is a pose I like to do when I'm feeling this way, because I, I feel like when when we feel like sad or grumpy or just like not ourselves, we kind of crunch in more. And, I'll be right back. Yeah, do your thing. Do your thing. Um, yeah, I feel like we just tend to crunch in to try to protect our hearts, but that ultimately doesn't do the best thing. It, it, it strains the muscles around our chest. But if we just take our block and put it kind of towards the top side of our mat, aiming for the middle of our scapula here, right in between our shoulder blades, we're just gonna we're just gonna melt over that block. The crown of the head's gonna come to the mat. Maybe legs are bent. Maybe they're you know extended out, splaying the feet out. Palms can be up, shining towards the sky, or or maybe they're on. Maybe one palm is on the chest, one palm is on the stomach. Just now is a good time to breathe. Let yourself be. Let the weight of your body naturally open the chest. Now's a good time to, if you feel comfortable, maybe close the eyes or give yourself a downward cast gaze. Just, just let that heart open up. I know it feels vulnerable. You know it may feel a little revealing, but ultimately it, it's good to be vulnerable. It's good to show that feeling. And as you breathe here and get comfortable in this posture, now's a great time.